just letting everyone in. How's everyone doing? Glad to be here. <laughs> I think there are a few of us that are glad to be here. It's been a interesting, interesting week. Okay. I'll just let everyone else in as they as they okay, yeah, they're arriving. Right. So, been told to do something a little bit different this this week. Um, and when I kind of got the download, I was like, mm, "No one's gonna like this one," because. <laughs> um, what I, what I was told is that you know we are developing and creating a community here. And as a community, everyone knows everyone. And yet there are a couple of us that, I mean, I talk every week, but there are only a few of you who participate um, as in verbally. And so I was told that to start today, we actually need to introduce ourselves um, to each other and maybe give some information and if you like, you can just give your name, you can say where you're from, you can tell us what's kind of going on for you if you like. But that's what I was told that we need to do. We need to start engaging as, as, as a community rather than just me um, talking the whole time. I mean, I have prepared today um, to, you know, to, to have a look at the energies. So we will do all of that and we will meditate. But to start, we're gonna we we're gonna go one at a time. Um, Lynn, for you who just joined, I've been told that oh, there are a few more people coming in that we need to introduce ourselves um, and start interacting more as a community and getting to know each other. Um, so I don't know who would like to go first. I mean, you all know me, so I'm not I'm not gonna go. Well, first, and I'll tell you why, Kate, because I actually was going to text you or um, email you during the week and say just that very thing that could we introduce ourselves because I talk a lot, I know, um, but there's faces like Fiona and Lynn that I've seen so many times and I don't even know what country people are from. I've been pretty open about where I'm from, um, but I'm Nancy and I live in Boston, Massachusetts, and I have been um, doing this kind of stuff more as a hobby for about 40, since I was 22 and I'm 66, so I have 44 years. Um, and for me, I kind of, I've been watching it, you probably know because I've emailed you, watching your daily things is how I found you. But when we went into lockdown, this has been such a, a sanity saver for me. And I feel like I've built a community and I see the same faces, but you know, I don't really know where people are from. A few people have kind of indicated and I can kind of guess from accents and things, but um, I think it, it just would be nice because I feel like like Fiona and Lynn, I, we've been in so many meetings together and I, I just wanted to tell them how some of these people that have spoken to me like Jen and everybody, it, it makes like my whole week because I'm here by myself. I live alone with my cats and I don't have kids or I grandkids, you know, I have nieces and nephews and sisters, but every, my family lives far away. And so this has just been so important to me. And like I said, during the week, I thought, I think I'm going to email Kate and say, could you have people introduce themselves so that, you know, we can become friends with each other. Um, so thank you for reading my mind. Um, 
But anyway, I'm in IT at a college, a nursing college. Um, I work from home right now. Um, I've done a lot of things in my life, IT being something I didn't even start until I was about 57. So not my primary love in life, but it's been interesting to keep my brain working. And um, I was in the hotel business. I taught college for 10 years. I was a criminal paralegal. So I've done a lot of things in my life. And I'm kind of in the winding down phase, I suppose, in the sense I still work, but this group has really helped me to begin looking at the other pieces of my life again and where maybe I want to go. So anyway, it, it, this group means a lot to me and, and I want to thank everybody whose faces I see um, for every week. So, Thank you, Nancy. Glad I, I, I glad I got the message. <laughs> no email needed. Okay, Kate. Well, I, I'm, I'm, cool. Who who was that? Kate? Oh, Megan, is that you? It is yes. There was, I, oh, I'm norm, normally just a name on the screen. I've actually gone to video this due to Nancy's request there. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks, Nancy. Um, okay, I'm Megan. Um, I'm 56 years old. I found Kate about two and a half years ago for a one-on-one -on -one energy clearing session, which is the most amazing thing that ever happened in my life, to, to know that there's somebody there that can help lighten your energy fields for you so that you can start seeing that there is wood in the trees. Um, I've studied a course with Kate now, and I'm still studying with Kate, um, which has been life-changing for me. Um, I live in a town called Middleburg, which is in a flat area of South Africa. Um, and I know most people don't know. It's close to Joburg. It's about two hours away from Johannesburg. That's the, the cue to say where I live. Um, I work as a personal assistant to one of the big corporations in the village. And... Uh, yeah, just on something that Nancy said that you, you're winding down now. You've had a very interesting life, but uh, I'm really looking forward to retirement. And the sooner it gets you, the better. It's, it's going to be such an exciting time, I'm quite sure. And I have four dogs, uh, one that's crippled. Um, uh, I never got married and never had children, but also have three nephews and a niece all grown up and a great nephew and a great niece who are in New Zealand. They are three years old and six months old respectively. That's about me in a nutshell. Thank you. I go well, I'll, I'll... Jennifer? Ah. As a relative newcomer, I'll go next. Um... So I learned about Kate um, through a, a very dear friend of mine. Uh, her name is um, Allison, Allison Schulte. Um, she, uh, I have been very lucky to have had um, lots of wonderful people in my life who have um, been mentors in the healing arts in Reiki and healing touch and um, various kinds of energy work and yoga um, um, for well since the since the late eighties so a while um, I'm the same age as you Megan I'm fifty fifty five I had to think <laughs> how old am I um, I'm uh, I have a, a partner Kirk and two wonderful um, adult boys I say adult now even though they're they they still seem little to me they're 21 and 23 um, I live in uh, North Liberty Iowa in the, the middle of, of the country in the US um, and uh, have a love of animals I have backyard chickens I have um, these these two puppies that are with me right now this is our newest one this is this is blue 
He's a standard poodle. He'll be quite big. This is Ellie, um, and they are they are wonderful. I won't show you the chickens, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, at some point, um, and like uh, uh, like Nancy, I've had lots of different facets of my career. Um, right now, working at the University of Iowa, doing communications for the library system, but I've done many other things in my life, um, and I'm also currently um, an ordained priest in the Episcopal Church here, um, and uh, am really finding that um, church is um, the church with a capital C is um, well, as Carolyn Mace would put it, because I get I've been listening to the book on your recommendation, Kate. Uh, as Carolyn Mace would say, uh, the church is dying, and it's it's been a wonderful uh, guide for centuries, but it's time. And I feel that I've known that in my heart, um, though I've been ordained for ten years. I um, uh, I, I just feel that um, my spirit path, my spiritual path. Uh, is moving in different directions. We spoke a few weeks ago about um, the need to let go of the idea of belief, and that's where I'm at uh, with this. And uh, um, so we have been finding this community an absolutely um, wonderful, wonderful part, um, really a, a divine part of, of every week, and not just on Sundays, but every day when I receive the, the guidance um, so appreciate that our, um, our community members say um, during the seminars and um, so thank you for the opportunity to, to um, meet everyone. I think it's going to be wonderful to connect faces and names. Thank you. Okay, who wants to go next? I'm going to jump in as another 56 year old. I think it seems to be the trend. Um, so I'm Fiona and I work and live in London. I run a design company. So I basically focus on super yachts and high-end residential. Currently in a bit of a mess because we're all in lockdown and office has been disbanded and working from home. Um, trying to renovate a flat for myself. I finally moved about a year ago, having tried for five years. Um, was introduced to Kate through Christopher. Thank you, Christopher. Um, basically listening to the daily or reading the daily posts that you put out and then only actually connected properly a few months ago but I've been listening to the post for about a year now I wish I'd done it sooner um, and have been doing a lot of energy work a lot of clearance family ancestral history nonsense which is no longer nonsense because it's all gone I hope um, and just rediscovering myself a bit which is great so actually had this time to focus on me rather than work. I was a workaholic and exhausted. And yeah, so it's me time and enjoying this enormously and learning to meditate, which my brain is so all over the shop. It's quite an achievement. So getting there. Anyway, nice to meet you all. Thank you. Oh, and from London, I said that, didn't I? Yeah. The voice might have given it away. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, Fiona. Okay, who's going next? Nancy. Hi, can't hear you. Can't hear you. Uh, no, I've unmuted you. Can't hear you. Could you maybe unplug your earphones? Maybe those are blocking the, the um, speaker. Still can't hear you. Uh, no, uh, hold on, hold on. Let's unmute you. No, it won't unmute now. I'll have to figure that out. Okay, does someone else want to go next while we figure out what's going on with Nancy's microphone? I'll go next. Good. Helen. <laughs> So I'm Lynn. I live in um, Belgium. Um, actually, I uh, was born in Wales, lived in England until I was 21 and wanted to travel the world and uh, my hormones got the best of me. So <laughs> I had three boys, 
um, had lots of career moves too. Um, and I'm now a teacher, but I don't know for how long, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, and I'm happy. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I'm happy. This last week, especially cleaning out even more. And yeah, I think life is just amazing. And it's like um, I've become four and a half again. I don't know if I ever went past four and a half, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, Nancy, have we got you sorted? Still can't hear you. No. I have to do it another time. Okay, who's going next? I'll go next. Okay. It's Pam. Pam. Hi, Pam. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm usually, I uh, have my video turned off because I do these calls from the comforts of my bed, not just my bedroom, but my bed. So I've done nothing with the hair or anything like that, but um, hello, everyone. Great way to meet people. <laughs> um, let's see. I've been, well, I, I, I noticed there, there are a couple of people on the, on the call that are in the tech industry, which I spent 30 years in software. And 2014, I took an early retirement. I am 61. I took an early retirement in 2014. Um, I was very burnout. Um, but here again, I was very much a uh, workaholic that my life and everything was about work, that there was zero work-life balance. It's been a process that I'm beginning to enjoy, but um, I uh, never married. I don't have children. So I find that very interesting. That seems to be a, a common theme here. I found Kate through the Spirit Library. Um, when I read her things, it just really, really resonated with me. I've done several sessions with her. And much like uh, what Kate said, people, this is my last time on this earth. I am not coming back. <laughs> it's been, it's, it continues to be a pretty uh, interesting journey um, for which I'm very grateful. And um, it's like, I am not retired. I'm actually in a, oh, I don't even want to call it a second, a second um, career, but it kind of sort of is. I'm working at a teller in a bank. Um, I'm realizing I feel like I have a lot more to give and it's, um, it's just an interesting environment, you know, coming, having come from a very professional corporate environment and then working in, not diminishing this in any way, but working in an environment where it's basically your hourly employees. It's a very different kind of uh, environment. It's a very good learning opportunity for me um, uh, in learning, oh, and learning a lot of things. It's one of the things I kind of continue to work on is to stop trying to solve problems that people are not asking me to solve. So that just continues to be, that's been a lifelong kind of theme for me. And I kind of continue to work on that. So, and I'm very grateful to be a part of this community. And I listen to every single word that everybody says. And uh, thank you for everyone for contributing. Um, now, maybe I won't be so shy about starting the video, but just keep in mind, I do it from the comforts of my bed. And I literally just probably woke up less than an hour ago. So there we go. Well, you look great for someone who's woken up an hour ago. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to just tell everyone where you where you are? Oh my gosh! Thank you. I forgot. Uh, I live in uh, Dallas, in the Dallas, Texas. Well, in the Dallas area, specifically a little bit further north of that in Frisco, Texas. But I am in Texas. Have been since 1985. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so Nancy's next. Yeah, um, uh, sent a note introducing herself. Uh, she says, hello everyone. I'm Nancy Badger, presently living in Asheville, north of North Ca area of North of Carolina. I enjoy hiking and connecting with nature, the elementals, the mineral kingdom, and the angels. My joy is to assist with the great awakening and empowering of others. And it is my pleasure to connect with you all on a Sunday morning. Beautiful. Thank you. Good to meet you. Um, Michelle, are you going to go next? Yes, I'll go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, Michelle, I'm a Los Angeles native. 
living in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And my husband and I just got here about 11 months ago. So I got through my first winter and studied my booty off to get my real estate licensing test to have COVID come and shut everything down, like literally like a week later. So um, we've been at home. My husband has a couple of uh, issues that make him very high risk for the virus. So we have been on total lockdown. And that's been the worst part for me, the isolation. My three children are um, 25, 23, 19, all still back in Los Angeles. And of course the plan was to go back and forth and see each other every two months and I have not seen them. So if I start crying, forgive me. I, it's been the worst part of this whole thing for me. Um, so basically this class and just coming together, I was an energy healer for 18 years before um, I just was kind of over it. And um, so Zoom yoga and this class is like my only um, connection with the outside world. And thank God for Zoom and FaceTime. That's how I keep in touch with my kids. So we're just uh, getting started in real estate. We just finally are getting started. So we'll see how this rolls out. We're not totally convinced Santa Fe is for us. The Los Angeles uh, native in me is kind of missing home a lot. Although right now, as you guys have seen, probably the fires, I'm watching that too. And it's just so heartbreaking. So fortunately, my kids are in Southern California. Um, but still, I've been praying for the firefighters and everybody every day. It's just so sad. So anyway, nice to meet everybody. Okay. Who's going to go next? I can go. Um, hi, I'm Anita. Um, I live in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I am 52. I'm also married, no children. Uh, wonderful nieces and nephews in my life, though. Um, yeah, I'm really, really grateful as well to, to be on this platform with you all and, and connect with you all. It means a huge amount. Um, I, my life has gone, uh, in terms of work, has done a lot of windy things um, from creative to scientific to whatever. But the sort of through line is my writing. Um, so I, yeah, I'm about to self-publish a novel that <clears> I shot for a very long time. And then I'm also working on a film script, which I'm really, really excited about, and which is completely connected to this kind of work, to energetic work, to soul work, to all of that. And it's, um, it's a really important movie to me. And um, I'm being pushed to get it out into the world mm -hmm. <laughs> as soon as possible. So um, yeah, and I've been working with Kate for, since about 2014, mm -hmm. like that. Um, before then, I did do other kinds of work, but um, not as intensively as, as the intensity started really in 2016, a real, real, real intensity. And it's been an absolute steep climb from there, but completely worth it. Um, as maddening and frustrating as it can sometimes be, it's, you yeah, know, the rewards and the beautiful things are, yeah, they're, they're, it's all worth it. So, um, yeah, just very, very grateful to be in this life, while at the same time, as um, Pam said, I definitely, this is my last one as well. <laughs> very happy about that. Um, and that's been confirmed. I was very happy to get the confirmation on that too. But not in a bad way, but just, it's time. You know, it's time. And um, it's also a rewarding feeling. Um, so I know that I have to, yeah, I have to get this one right. I have to really, I have to get it all done in this one. But wonderful to be here and and an honor to work with all of you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Anita. Okay. I'll go if you like, Kate. Oh, hi. Hi. Hello. To see your face. Um, sorry? Nice to see your face. Yes. Sorry, I haven't been, I'm Nicola, everyone. Sorry, I haven't been able to join for ages. Um, but I do listen to the recordings, you know, afterwards. So I'm Nicola, I live in Cape Town. I'm sitting in bed because it's cold and wet and miserable outside. Um, so I'm in marketing. So I've got a, a marketing and events business. I'm married with two children, an uh, eight-year-old girl and a five-year-old boy. And I can hear them screaming in the background. Um, 
and yeah, I did a course with Kate about, I think it was about three years ago. Mm. Um, and I'm just on this kind of journey of, of trying to understand this world and this universe and my purpose in it and letting go of stuff that doesn't serve me and all that good stuff. So um, I really enjoy these sessions when I can, when I can make it and getting Kate's weekly emails, daily emails are fantastic as well, just to kind of keep your head clear during this, this somewhat crazy time. So nice to meet you all. Thanks, Nicola. Nice to see you. Do I bring up the rear? Yep. <laughs> Hi, Lorraine. Hi. Um, um, can you see me? Because it didn't flip yeah. on yet. Okay. I'm Lorraine Enright. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia in, in the U.S. Um, so a, a southerner. Um, I've been, uh, let's see, I have a design business as well, uh, architectural interior design. Um, done a lot of different things in that field over the years and a lot of sensory design and different things that have led me to this point where I'm, I'm working on a book that Kate we've talked about before and I giggle because I'm really struggling to get it done but it's I'm making progress with it and it's something that I'm getting pushed to get out into the world as well and it's really about getting into your heart and um, understanding your heart so that you can um, create environments that you feel right in so um, but on the intuitive side I've been on this journey for a while um, you know, probably starting a decade ago, um, and a lot of things happening in our lives. I'm married to two boys that are twins. They're 23 now, um, but really pushed through a lot of things to really wake up, and so I've been working with an intuitive that's here in Atlanta for seven years now, so uh, she's actually the one that connected me to Kate. She just the beginning of the quarantine, she just sent me one of Kate's um, spiritual pathways and said, hey, this is interesting, check it out. And then it just led me to, um, you know, getting on the webinar. And, and I was really wanting a community because I was raised Catholic um, and missed the community of that. I didn't, for many years, have struggled resonating, you know, with that background. Um, but missing the community. So I really wanted to find a group that, you know, was really spiritual, but in, a, in this vein of um, soul orientation. So anyway, I found you guys and have really been enjoying the, um, the webinars. And I too get up Sundays. I'm a workaholic too. So I get Sundays are my day to sleep in. So I tend to get up and just show up the way I am. So, um, you know, been guilty of keeping my camera off but we'll we'll work on that <laughs> so anyway glad to be here I've been enjoying it and I think it's just spectacular to have women around the country or around the world that we're talking with about the same thing which really is um, all of us trying to help our, both ourselves and everyone around us kind of rise through this you know this tumult, tumultuous excuse me, time that we've got to go through to get there. So anyway, we'll just continue on our path. Thanks, Lorraine. Shall I have a go? Yeah, have a go. Um, hi, my name's Christopher. I am sitting somewhere in North London, up on the hill in the sunshine. Um, I, as Fiona said, Fiona and I met Actually, look, actually, before the yachting industry, actually, through a woman called Angela Donovan. But I met Kate back in 2005 when I was walking around Court Bay, I think, and I saw an A board outside talking about healing. And it was closed, so I decided to hang around. And um, I um, hung around, and I hung around, and then finally met Kate, and we've been friends ever since. Um, and I probably am more fortunate because we are great friends, and I think we speak every day um we're, we're mates which is very nice and i treasure that relationship deeply and obviously the work we do together aside of all that has just been extraordinary my sister fiorenza has managed to get away with this today but you know you see her as well so um she's probably hiding out in the hills of umbria somewhere um i 
I suppose I, I, I had my, I went through the looking glass, well, actually I can tell you the date, September the 11th, 2001. So it's almost my anniversary. And that's when I really started searching. And within that searching, I came across different people. With Fiona, I came across Angela, and then came across Case. And um, it's, yeah, I kind of slightly feel like a member of Harry Potter. It's always been a seeker. And within that, the self-improvement within myself, but also realizing that it is a roller coaster. And every time I hit that point when you think, oh, this is a nice rhythm and it's really lovely and wonderful, and then you slightly get um, swept off. But I think that's all part of the energetic, um, what's it, kind of energetic healing and it's the energetic growth. Certainly these last lockdown was extraordinary. Um, I live with my parents. I got divorced three years ago, three and a half years ago, although I have a very close relationship with my ex-wife and my two stepchildren who are now 21 and 20, one, and both at the university. Um, I live in a small, I, I, I say I live in a small barn in Limington, but actually I don't. I live with my parents. It's great. It's good. They've got a big house. They're 80 and 85. And to be honest, I might as well use this time because I think um, my ex-wife's father died three weeks ago. And you suddenly, you know, it is valuable this time. We spend a lot of our childhood wondering what the hell our parents are up to and what they're doing. And actually, yeah, it's quite nice to spend this time with them and, um, and not hopefully not look back and think I'm missing anything. In the meantime, I'm a photographer and um, hopefully Fiona will give me a job. Um, but I, I photograph super yachts, I photograph food, I photograph people. Um, throughout the entire lockdown, I went out every single day. In fact, lockdown was incredibly inspirational. It was almost unlocked down for me. So I went out every single day and photographed London right from the beginning and um, how it went from the macro to the micro. How people, it wasn't a deserted city, it wasn't an abandoned city, it was a deserted city that then came back to life again. Um, and actually, I was kind of slightly upset that um, uh, lockdown ended. <laughs> I wish everyone would go back. Um, but having said that, this is all part of the journey and it's an incredible shift we're going through. And I treasure these moments. It's lovely to hear everyone's voice and see everyone, or see nearly everyone. Um, and uh, when Kate said to me the other day, she said, I'm going to do something new. And then was about to say, and I said, don't, don't tell me. Actually, if she had told me, I probably would have gone to lunch. So I'm quite glad she didn't tell me. Anyway, but it's um, lovely to meet you all. And it's a joy to be here on a Sunday. And uh, I couldn't think of a better way to start or end a week. So thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm very glad I didn't mention it. Okay, so we've got two two other people who haven't had a go yet. Three other people. Four. I'll go. I'll go. Okay, great. Hi, Linda. Hi, uh, my name is Linda. I'm very new to the group. Um, I was introduced um, by Nancy Badger to you all. Um, I'm from Florida. I'm 59. I've just recently, in the last few months, moved to North Carolina. Um, kind of on my third act, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, I've been on my spiritual journey probably since the early 90s. Um, I'm married. I have one daughter who's 22 and a grandson who's one. Um, kind of put the spiritual stuff on hold to be a full-time mom and jumped back in about five years ago. So um, excited to try to find some conscious communities out there and and see what everyone else is doing and um i look forward to your emails every day and i'm really grateful to have found you all so thank you thank you nice to meet you linda nice to have you here okay who's gonna go next We can hear you. I can, yeah. I'm Liz, and Mike and I live in Nzola in Zambia. Uh, we've been, I'm Irish by birth, and I've lived in Zambia for, since 1987. We have two sons, one in Melbourne in lockdown, and the other one in quarantine in Taiwan at the moment. So we haven't seen them in quite a long time. My journey, I think, was always there, but I found Reiki here in Zambia in 1999, and then I learned life alignment as well. We found Kate about two years ago, I would say, um, Touche, our, our common friend. 
And um, yeah, the, the dailies have been the steady rock. The community has been wonderful. The Sundays are really important. And it's great to meet everybody. And it's just lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Right. Thanks. What? And I'm Mike. Um, I've got five children. In fact, I have two with Liz. And I have three others, one of them in lockdown in Los Angeles and two in the UK. And um, basically, I'm here to support Liz in her journey as well. <laughs> and um, I find, I find your, your daily um, messages a gem because it puts sense into what's going on at the moment. Good. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Okay. Who's going to be next? Gail? Or Clarice? You two haven't had a turn yet. Are we going to hear from you? Maybe they're not online. Laura, do you want to have a go? Oh, unmute you. There we go. Hi. This, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, this is my first time on Zoom. Oh. And my first live with you. So I'm not exactly sure how this works. That's why I couldn't volunteer before. Do I just click on the raise hand? Is that how it works? Yeah. Uh, I. It's fine. No worries. Anyways, I live in New York. Um, like I said, this is my first live with you, but I have been getting the emails weekly and I really enjoy them. So I made an effort to join today and um, I have two children here in New York. I'm originally from Chicago. I've been in New York for 20 years now. And, um, and that is pretty much it, I guess. I haven't worked. I worked um, in the airline industry, and I haven't worked this year yet. So it's been a long, what is it, eight months now at home, and uh, I'm looking forward to going back to work soon. And, um, and that's pretty much it. Great. Well, nice to have you with us. Thank you for yeah. make, making the time. Thank you. Okay. I'm not sure we're going to hear from the other two. All right. Maybe next time. Well, thank you all so much. That wasn't so bad. No one disappeared. Everyone stayed. <laughs> I think we lost one person. <laughs> well, if you'd given us a heads up, you would have lost Christopher, but at least Pam and I would have done our hair. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> thanks for not for not disappearing. And I promise none of us really care if you're in your jammies. I mean, everyone's becoming master of Zoom of being able to look okay from the top to the waist. <laughs> no one knows what's going on from the waist down, so it's fine. And you don't look like you've just woken up or that you're in bed. Okay, so should we get on to having a look at um, the energies? So the, the exciting news for this week, and actually it happens today, is that Jupiter, um, which is the planet of gifts and good luck and all good things, is going direct. It's been in retrograde, I think, since May, sometime in May. And today it finally goes direct. So that that is, in a sense... Um, quite a relief because um, when we have Jupiter in retrograde, it does mean that, you know, finding the gifts in our everyday experience can be a real challenge. So as Jupiter turns, turns direct, we have the opportunity now to, to experience and to feel the gifts of, of where we're at and, 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 and what we're moving through. Um, and it's also, you know, it's, <laughs> Energetically, there is this, it does feel like we're going through a bit of a slog. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but the last, it's the last two weeks have been pretty rough physically. 
Um, I think that a lot of people have been feeling exhausted. I certainly have been feeling shattered. There've been days where I haven't been able to get much done, the bare minimum, and um, the rest of the time has been s s spent lying on the sofa. Um, so it is this, you know, it does feel like on a physical level, it's almost like we're taking strain. And so with Jupiter turning direct, there is this opportunity for more energy to come in to help us and to support us moving forward. And we are, we are moving forward. I mean, as much as it may feel like we're not, we are moving forward. There are some dramatic events that are happening. Um, I think I spoke about, you know, I might have subtly tried to mention that we, we were heading into a time because of Mark going, Mark, Mars going into retrograde, we were heading into a time where there would be some dramatic events happening. We've got these incredible fires happening um, in, in the moment um, in, in the States. Um, you know, if we look at just in the last few years, you know, last year we had those incredible fires in um, South America. We also had the fires in Australia. There's a lot of that fire energy that is moving across the planet. And if we look at what fire is as an element, um, you know, it brings a massive transformation, but also supports the regeneration. So if we look at fire as the gift that it actually brings is, is, is this gift of transformation and this gift of regeneration after the, after the flames have died down. What is happening underneath that is this incredible regeneration. So it is important to kind of observe on a, on a global level what is happening and how that impacts us collectively. So even though we, you know, some of us may not be the, in, in America experiencing that, collectively it is impact, impacting all of us. And I think we need to remember that because a lot of the time, um, you know, I, I kind of keep an eye on what's going on worldwide with regards to environmental stuff, earthquakes, volcanoes, these kind of dramatic fires, um, because it also shows me where our attention on an energetic level is, because we're doing work, whether we're consciously aware of it or not, there is an aspect of us that is working with these elemental forces. Um, we are, we are, we are connected to the planet in, in a, in a, in a deep and profound way that for most of us, we're not even really aware of, but when we start to actively connect with that, that energy and become aware of it and, and further develop that connection or that awareness, we start to recognize the impact that these kind of events have on us from an energetic level, from a, a on an emotional level, a lot of the times, um, because there can be emotions that come up and surface, but we don't really know where they're coming from. But we are processing for the collective. We're not just processing for ourselves. So it is important to, to recognize that and to work with it. You know I, know, I know for myself, it can be unbelievably frustrating when I have things to do. You know, I have appointments. I have um, things that I, I, I've got to do with my children, commitments that I have that I can't kind of get out of. And it can be frustrating to be so exhausted and yet having to move through that, that and, and, and kind of continue with the other stuff, the human stuff. Um, and, but, but what I've learned is that we actually need to find that space of balance for ourselves, where we are able to look after ourselves, where we are able to take time for the care, the self care that we need. Um, so it is really important at the moment um, to just really look after yourself physically to make sure that you are getting enough rest, that you're eating properly, that you are drinking enough water, um, that you are not straining yourself in any way, um, because there's a lot of energetic work that we, we, we are involved in. Um, here's a message from Nancy. I have several me family members and several of my oldest friends are in Northern California and Oregon, so it's hard to see what is happening. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, I met a, um, where I live, there's a, the mountains around me are, are considered a, a nature reserve, so they are protected. Um, and I was in the forest two weeks ago and bumped into some people who are 
they manage the the the, the area, the, the the reserve, and they were saying, oh, you know, enjoy the trees because they, you know, they're going to be cut down soon. And you know, it was like, oh, why why are you cutting the trees down? And you know, he started to explain about how these trees are aliens. They're actually not indigenous trees, and and you know, and and I know this because they're pine trees. We don't get pine trees in Africa. Um, the pine needles are very create or make the soil very acidic, so nothing kind of grows. It destroys the top layer of the soil, and there's a whole thing that goes on. Um, and but what he actually said is that you know they're going to start doing controlled fires again. Um, because a couple of years ago, we had a massive um, thing of, of fires literally going circling around us. All the mountains around us were on fire. And um, they were explaining how important it is for, for the earth, for the soil, and for the plants that these fires happen. Um, and he said, you know, what's, what's frustrating for them is that they are there's obviously houses and people and families that exist on these uh, on uh, in and around these lands that actually need to be burnt um, and he said it's always so challenging trying to do that so and what's interesting is that um, you know in 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 the states now it is the fire season this end of summer time it is when the fire starts and when the land needs the fire to be able to to regenerate the soil and to regenerate the plants so as devastating as it can be, um, I think it is important to, to recognize the greater purpose for this, as well as, as you've just said, Megan, the energetic clearing that, that, is, that is happening there. Um, uh, because it is, it is part of that. Um, and that's where we're at at the moment, is this need to kind of clear, to transform, to shift, to move past all the old stuff and, and, and really into the new and to embrace the new. And that's where the challenge can be is that, you know, some of the things that we're being asked to walk away from or the things that we're being asked to let go of don't look like they should be something that we let go of because they still seem relevant or they, they are not. I, I think that we're also so used to the rug being pulled out from underneath us. Um, you know, when, when, the, when it comes to the end of something, it's often, you know, I, certainly in my life, there have been many times where I don't see the, the end sign and I just keep going and eventually the universe just pulls the whole road out from underneath me and I kind of fall and go, why, why is that happening to me? What, you know, what is going on? Um, and it's it's just because you know the end sign was a couple of months behind me and I didn't notice it, um, and that was you know I didn't notice because it didn't look like it was the end. I thought that there was still stuff I needed to do, things I needed to learn, opportunities that I still needed to embrace, but there weren't any. So it's interesting that we're at this time where we're being asked to really look at what is going to be relevant for us moving forward not if it is the end of something now is it going to be relevant relevant and if it isn't to move it out the way to let it go to and and that goes for relationships work um you know i'm finding myself doing when i've got the energy and i'm not lying on the sofa doing um kind of spring cleaning um you know cleaning out cupboards that you know full of just they kind of get filled with junk. I don't know how it happens, but it does. Um, cleaning out all of that kind of stuff. Uh, Nancy, one of my favorite sayings, act on the whispers before they become shouts. Exactly. Um, I, I'm, yeah, I got used to the shouts. And I think we're being told not to get to that point because actually that also keeps us in that space of survival, which we're trying to get out of. We're trying to get out of survival and get into a space of being able to thrive. And if things are kind of being ripped from us rather than us actively engaging in the process and making that choice of that decision to, to walk away, to step away, to let go, whatever it is, we're needing to, to, to acknowledge it. Um, and on a, you know, and on a subconscious level as well, you know, there's, I think it is so interesting because 
there seems to be such contradiction in the world at the moment. You know, there's such incredible things happening and yet at the same time, there are such awful things happening. So we're kind of seeing the, and being faced with this light and the dark and it, it, it really is in our face, you know, whether it's happening in ourselves or in our environments, it's really present. And so we're really having to look at how do we balance this? How do we balance ourselves within this um, extreme energetic space that we find ourselves in? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not about stepping into the light. It's not about stepping into the dark. It's holding that space of balance so that we don't get sucked into things that are, are no longer relevant or we don't get sucked into that space of becoming the activists. Um, because I don't think that that's what we're meant to be doing. We're not supposed to be fighting what is being dissolved, what is breaking down. We're meant to be building the new, not focusing on the old. So it can be this real, I suppose, um, balancing act of trying, you know, of not being sucked into the old stuff or not getting sucked into the, 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 the conspiracies and that sort of thing, of really focusing on moving forward, not looking behind us and what's going on. And it's, it's challenging. I mean, even for me, you know, I, I get emails and I get information sent to me and um, I've got a couple of friends and family members who get a little obsessed with the conspiracy stuff and spiral into those down those tunnels and and you know so every now and then I think oh well maybe I should just watch this or I should have a look at this and no it's it's definitely not my not my battle that one and I don't think it is for any of you either um, so we really are having to make sure that we are focusing our energy on what is going to sustain us moving forward what is going to help us moving forward Lorraine I feel that we are meant to hold the light that alchemizes the darkness that has been shown to the world. I agree. I agree. Um, I think that time of needing to be the warrior and to fight for our rights or fight for what we need, I think that, that, that we've, we've moved beyond that kind of archetypal role. Um, and then... I was shown to go deep into my darkness at the end of it. There was this fantastic light. Look, I think that the, the difference in delving into your own darkness and into your own shadow aspects, I think that's important because we need to move through that kind of stuff so that we have a deeper understanding of ourselves and that we are able to let go of things that could possibly hold us back or limit us in any way. Um, so that's, a, that, that, you know, that's an important step to take is to move through the things that um, kind of constrict your energy or constrict your consciousness, because we are expanding our consciousness into realms that we've never really experienced before. And so a lot of, for a lot of people that is, is really overwhelming. Um, and I think that, you know, when you step into a space after being confined for so long, if you step into that expanded space, one of two things happen. You either feel completely free and you feel the lightness of that space or you feel fear. So I'm a really observing those two things happening in people as they're stepping, you know, there's some people that are stepping into this expanded space and it's like, oh yes, finally I'm here. I can feel the space. I'm not feeling like I'm being limited. And then there are other people that are stepping into this expanded space and there's just anxiety and fear and panic and they don't really know what to do or how to handle it. And I think the key here is that we need to be, um, we need to be in a space where we can be in that space of, expan of expansion and not go into fear. Um, because the fear literally contract contracts us. And then we can't see. We can't see the opportunities. We can't see where we're being guided to go. We can't see the path in front of us. We can't see the next step in front of us because it's, it's too scary. Um, and I think that... You know, for what, what, I've, what I'm feeling within myself is this need for real compassion for those people that are going into fear um, and to not, to not try and convince them not to. 
so you know there's always certainly for me in the past it was this I did feel a need to convince people of you know to wake up and to see things differently and to see opportunities and um, to expand their awareness to expand their consciousness and I over the years I got to the point of realizing that it is best to deal with the people who ask the questions and who want to go there rather than trying to convince the ones who have contracted into fear that this is the way they need to go and so I've I, I've kind of stopped the fighting um, and 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 that kind of warrior mode and enable those people or allow those people to be in that space of fear and to just say you know it's okay um i don't think it's it's our job to convince anyone of where they need to be and how they need to be we need to focus on where we're at um And the, the, you know, the, the theme that I think that we're going to be playing with for the rest of this year is about balance. Um, and again, if we look at the fires and what the fire brings, you know, fire is, as an element, is linked to the spirit. So it is the spirit that moves through fire and brings that transformation. Um, you know, and we are in the throes of a spiritual awakening that is moving across the entire world. Right now it's being focused on, um, on that, that area in America. So uh, Fiona, I've also stopped justifying things to those who don't really understand and attack my thinking rather than ask questions. Exactly. We don't need to justify anything. Um, yeah. And I think that, What's, what's, what's been fascinating for me this year particularly has been the amount of fear in people around this, this need to justify what they're doing, what they're, why they think the way that they think, why they are on this journey, the spiritual journey. Um, and a lot of that fear comes from these past live experiences where we were, you know, burnt at the stake and all of those juicy things um yeah and I, I remember reading a book a few years ago and it was it it started in the 12th century and it kind of went through this the, the, you know the beginning of the, the 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 burning of the witches and it went through the whole the whole sorry saga and you know we had 500 years of that so you know all of us at least once have been have been taken out for our beliefs and taken out for what it is that that, that we stand for and the, and our differences and so we really are moving into a time where we need to let go of those fears so that we can actually just be ourselves we're not caught up in this need to explain or to justify or to um, convince anyone else that it needs to be this way it's, it's just you know doing what feels right for ourselves and what we feel called to do um, and I think now, you know, as we build these kind of communities, um, it becomes easier because we recognize we're not alone. I mean, all of it, we were all over the world here and, uh, you know, we're all on the same journey. Um, And there is the sense of, of over the next few months of, of really focusing on ourselves, strengthening ourselves and bringing ourselves into a new space of balance within this expanded space that we're in. Um, I think the next few months are gonna be interesting on a global level. Um, they're already getting interesting. Uh, I mean, 2020 is, it's a year that I don't think any of us are going to forget um, anytime soon. And, I, you know, we've still got a few more months of it. So I think that there's, there's some interesting stuff that's going to be happening and we need to make sure that the focus is on us. Build yourself, build your energy, focus on that. Um, that'll give you the, the ability to, to remain neutral in the face of everything that's happening.
Um, and I think that ability to stay neutral is, is essential. You know, when we, when we are in a neutral space um, energetically, in a neutral space emotionally, we're not triggered by anything. Um, we just observe what happens around us. We observe what happens in the world and we allow what needs, what needs to be. Um, rather than thinking we need to change things in any kind of dramatic way. Um, as hard as that can be sometimes. Nicola. Good question. I don't know how to answer that. Why is it that it seems more women are involved in spiritual journeying than men? Um, I think there are there are a number of answers to that question. I think firstly, women are comfortable with um, emotions. They're comfortable delving into the, those uncomfortable spaces. Um, and it's more accepted. It's more accepted for women to be emotional. It's more accepted for women to be sensitive. It's more acceptable for women to Yeah, to, to learn, to, to grow. Men have been conditioned to do other stuff. Um, I mean, I, I know some incredible men who are doing some incredible work. Um, there are not a lot of them, but I do know them. Um, I don't know, may, maybe, Chris, you can answer come on you're, you're the man mike and chris are the only two that are here don't you have an answer do you seriously want me to answer that question yeah i think i think there is i think there's a there's a skepticism but i think i think it's um i think of anything actually men do it undercover i think you know they haven't quite come out in their quite come out yet. I don't necessarily think that it's, um, you know, more or less. I think certainly with the advent of the internet and everything else like that, I think there's more discovery that they do, um, which is personal discovery and all that kind of stuff and much more aware. Whether or not they actually want to talk about it and be open about it, it's, it's, it's like having 10 pints at a pub. No one likes to say they're not drinking. They always have to say they're not they're driving. They're not they're just, you know, they can't say, I just don't drink. So I think there is an enormous amount of peer pressure, but fundamentally, I think um, more and more people are aware. I think, yes, the balance is between, the certain balance is between on the, on the female side, but I think more and more um, guys do it um, quietly. Yeah, I, I actually agree with that. I do think they do it quietly. Um, I mean, I, 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 you know, I've recently heard of a number of men's groups. Um, so it, it, they're, they're doing it, but they're doing it uh, together as men. Mike, maybe you have an answer for us as well? Well, I was thinking it's probably more the, the, the women are more the nurturers. So they look after the, the, the well-being of, of, of the community, mm. where the men were historically the hunters. So they weren't the gentle, the gentle souls. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, and then Jennifer made a comment, yeah, spiritual work is often about birthing. Mm. I agree. Um, but yeah, I think if we recognize that, you know, we, whether you're male or female, you have the, the masculine and the feminine energy within you, you know, so men are quite capable of birthing too on an energetic level. Um, so, yeah. And then for, you know, a lot of, a lot of women here haven't had children, um, but that doesn't stop you from being able to birth new projects, new ideas, new, new ways of being, living. Uh, I think it's an energetic thing rather than a, a physical thing. Um, Nancy, my kitties are my kids. I think there are a lot of a lot of people that think that way.
All right, so the focus for this week um, is to find that space of balance and find that space of neutrality within yourself. Mm. Um, you know, to not get sucked into the drama of what is happening in and around the world. Um, and to, you know, and, you know and in that space, actually find your own peace, um, which I think is really, really important. So neutrality is not necessarily a space of, of not caring. It's just a space of pure peace and acceptance um, where you don't feel pulled in one or the other direction. You're actually just able to be where you are. There's total acceptance of everything that's happening. There's total acceptance of yourself. Um, and there doesn't, there's no real need to, to, to engage in things that are dramatic or draining. Um, you can see, you know, that happening around you, but you don't feel like you need to engage in it. Um, and also because the sense is, is that there is this deeper connection that is happening within all of us. We're connecting on a deeper level to our soul. Um, and that we need, we need the internal focus rather than the external focus of getting sucked into the drama. Anyone, anyone else got any input or anything they'd like to share or another question? With everything going on in the world, I think that I've really been focusing on just what you said, because um, we've been talking about it, obviously, week after week. It's, it, is, it feels sometimes like a full-time job just to keep pulling yourself out of the chaos and back into, you know, if you watch the news or you listen to people or whatever and then you have to i literally have to stop like i don't know how many times a day and go whoa back to me back to peace um but it, like i said it, it's probably the hardest time in my whole life to do that um because it's hard to ignore the crazy that's going on everywhere you look and all over the world and you know it's not just oh this terrible thing happened over here it's whoa like nothing we've ever seen and my sense is that the fall we're going to look at spring and summer as weren't that bad um i hate to think that but that's my feeling about it and and um so anyway i'm trying to if you can store up peace in a in a vat that's what i'm trying to do so thank you because i think that's good advice good i mean i think i think it's also it is so it is difficult to to remain in that neutral space or in that place of peace when there is so much chaos and it's not like there hasn't been chaos in the world but now it's it's like next level because every single place in the world is being affected there's not just one area where our focus is being drawn it is literally worldwide um, so it becomes even more of a challenge to to kind of unplug, to pull our energy back. Um, and yeah, as Pam says, the gift is you catch yourself, Nancy, which is amazing. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, that the, the we can learn to see where our energy is and pull it back. Um, Just one quick thing that from the work that I've been doing with at the moment, which has been brilliant, clearing old patterns and historical um, energies or negative energies and things, um, it's actually being in the present has really helped me not to get caught up in the drama. It's something about feeling more balanced and the more present I stay, you're not looking back in the past or comparing it to things or how much worse it will get in the future. If you actually stay here and now, you can remove yourself from it and be quite objective. Um, and as you say, not, not care about it, but not get so involved it upsets you. That, that's what I've found. So that's been really useful for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it, being present in the moment. Um, which is also something we're not used to being in because often the moment can be quite uncomfortable. There's that beautiful meme of, I think it's a, what does it say? It says something along the lines of, um, I'll stay in the present moment until that becomes uncomfortable and then I'm going for a nap. And I always remember that one of like, you know, when it becomes uncomfortable and I, I often do do that. I often think, okay, that's it. I've had enough. 
take to my bed for a little bit and then you know start again reset um and that is you know that's also yeah jennifer oh sorry go go ahead no i was just just gonna say yeah go ahead i was just gonna say it's important that self-care is important during these times Mm -hmm. yeah most definitely uh i i just was remembering as we're talking about 2020 uh an image just popped into my head when the new year turned a friend of mine put a funny picture as a happy new year message um it was a picture of swiss cheese um with a two and a two right and then the little hole and a little hole in the cheese uh and i have thought about that over and over and over that perhaps the message is not all of these chaotic events so much as that the 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 universe is is pulling the plug on these things so it's not the presence of these events so much as it's the absence the the things that are getting pulled out of this world so swiss cheese you know i mean (laughs) and and that that is a that's a um to me, that's another birthing reference, right? I mean, that the, the 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 making way, um, the 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 the, uh, um, the chaotic destruction of things makes way for the new, just like the fires and 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 so on. Um, but it it causes me to giggle to think that this chaos bubbles and cheese. I don't know. <laughs> I like that. Twenty twenty Swiss cheese. I can do that one. I, I like that one. I'll, I'll throw this one in there. Ever since the beginning of the quarantine, I have been, have been shown this vision several times of walking to, across a bridge and there's fire and chaos and everything below it. And um, I keep being shown that so that we just have to stay above it. So anytime I find myself falling into it or getting attracted down into all the all the drama I just kind of imagine myself either walking over that bridge or sometimes I'll do where I'll just do meditation where I'm walking up a staircase trying to get myself into a higher dimension and that really helps but um you know just sharing that yeah that's a great technique thanks thanks for that I like the Swiss cheese because that is, I think you're exactly right. It's like these things aren't happening. They've always been happening. We're just starting to see it. And and we have to go through this really hideous process of it all being seen, but we don't have to get down in it. We can just, we're supposed to try to stay up here. And if you feel yourself falling, you just move yourself back up and, just keep working on that. And that's one. I, I love your dailies because they are in the moment and you'll find yourself, yeah, that's exactly where I am. And then you just, okay, get back up. Yeah, it really helps. Yeah, I mean, there are mornings where I sit and write those and I think, yeah, I, I'm in not in a great space myself and I'll write that email and I think, well, that daily inspiration and I think, oh, okay, it's all fine. That's right. It's fine. <laughs> You help yourself and help all of us. <laughs> all right. So should we get on to doing uh, some meditating? I think it's um, I think it's time. So if you can find yourself into a space of um, relaxed space. And then when you're ready, just closing your eyes. And focusing your awareness on your breath. And just allow yourself to settle into this moment. And into the space that we're creating together. And just take a few deep breaths 
And just let go of any stress, any worry, any concerns, just let them all go. And allowing your body to become still. Allowing your mind to calm. And in your mind's eye, see yourself sitting before a body of water. This can be the ocean or a lake. or a river, a stream. And just allow yourself to connect to the water. Connect it to its depths, connect to its flow, its movement. And observe what your water is like. Is it moving very fast? Is it slow? What is the movement of your water? And observe the color of the water. And when you're ready, allow yourself to step into the water and to begin to move through the water. Feel as it washes over your feet and your ankles and your legs. And then when you're ready, just allowing yourself to completely submerge yourself in the water. Feel it washing over your face and your hair. And just allowing this water to cleanse and to clear your energy field. And allow yourself to gently lie back in the water, floating on its surface. Feel yourself relaxing into the water. Feel the gently washing over your body. And feel yourself moving with its flow.
And as you feel supported by the water, you allow your awareness and your consciousness to begin to expand outwards. Moving into the waters, expanding. Keep expanding until you feel like you become the water. And you feel the movement of the water as your own movement. And you feel its depths as your own depths. And you feel its peace and its power. You feel its strength. And you allow that strength and that power to awaken within you. And gently allowing your awareness and your consciousness to move back. Coming together in your body while you are lying in the water. You remain connected to the water. Feeling its energy and its power and its support. And you ask if there are any messages or information or insights that the water wishes to share with you at this time. Perhaps there's something in the depths of your being that needs to be seen, acknowledged, recognized.
And now allowing yourself to move out of the water. Connecting back to the earth. And connecting back to your physical form. And then just taking a couple of deep breaths and drawing your awareness back into this time and into this space, into this moment. Just allowing yourself to feel your fingers and your toes. And you can open your eyes when you're ready. So I think it is Carl Jung that has always equated the um, the waters that we see in our unconscious. I mean, the waters that we see in our meditations and in our dreams as as the unconscious. Um, and it was as as I kind of went into the space of, of meditation, and um, I just saw this masses mess of water in front of me so it was obviously something we are being called to connect with um at one point i did think funny that we're not connecting to fire seeing that seems to be what's happening but i hope you enjoyed that it'd be interesting to see um and to take note for yourselves what your what your waters looked like how fast were the flow was was it still was it rough um, was there movement? Was there no movement? Were there things in the water? Um, the colors, all of that is relevant. The symbology of all of that will be quite relevant to where you're at and, and perhaps some insights and information will come, will have come through for you. If you've got any questions, you can Ask me now or email me later. Oh, good. Cooling and embracing. Yeah, Lorraine. Thanks, Lorraine. Okay. Well, thank you for um, sticking with me through this one. <laughs> Hope to see you all next week. Hope I didn't lose a few of you. Um, it, it's, it was really great to... to hear your voices and to see the faces that we don't normally see and um, thank you all for being brave enough to to speak you don't have to have your hair done <laughs> it's so it doesn't matter <laughs> exactly you can't see that well <laughs> okay well i look forward to connecting with you all next week and have a wonderful week um keep well look after now, yourself now that we expect to be on full view we will do our hair don't worry about it lorraine we'll do it <laughs> oh no we won't this is pam oh no i won't <laughs> for you pam <laughs> i swear i haven't done my hair since we went into lockdown you know I actually wear it down normally and I wear it up all the time now. Okay, you can wear it down for us next week, Nancy. Yeah, I just have to take mine down as well, then. Usually, down. This is usually there down. <laughs> there we go. Oh, look, everyone's got quite long hair. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Mine's just really dirty. Back. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Um, Let your hair down, guys. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Lorraine, what a fabulous mane of hair. Great. <laughs>
It's just very dirty. <laughs> it doesn't look it. <laughs> Trust me. Yes. Mine is what it's worth. Usually Sunday night's my night to wash my hair, one of the nights. So um, the other reason I always have it back. But all right. Yeah. Next week. Yeah, it's usually Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> so, and one more thing on the water, I had to laugh. I kind of went to a beach here in New England until you said we had to get in the water. And then I went, oh no, it's way too cold. <laughs> so I had to like move it to the Caribbean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very cool. Let it flow. <laughs> I'm a water person, so that one is good. Mm -hmm. What was that, Megan? I was going to say, well, look forward to seeing everybody next week. And thanks again. It's been great. Yeah, nice to get to know everybody. I think we should make Kate do it next week, but that's just me. <laughs> I thought I'd spoken enough. I'll do it next week, okay? That's right. <laughs> It has hey, to open just, up with, hi, I'm Kate. <laughs> uh, my name is Kate and I'm a, um, <laughs> I have to figure it out. Exactly, <laughs> I, I'm a. <laughs> What's that, Fiona? She, she knows all our secrets. Yeah, that's it. You've got to be nice to her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, promise, it's a, it's a vault. Anyway, take care. I'll see you next week. Yes, yes, okay. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.